And welcome back to the Bitcoin Boomer Show. I do want to remind you, if you know anyone who's interested in Bitcoin at all, or you think may be interested, please share this show with them. We don't sell Bitcoin on this show. All we're trying to do is educate you about Bitcoin on this show. And actually, if you listen to the show enough, you're going to be able to carry on a conversation and be very educated about a subject here. So this is a great subject to be interested in, to be knowledgeable on, and to talk about, in my humble opinion. And now let's welcome Neil Jacobs back to the show. Neil, sorry we cut you off there. Um, That's okay, my bad. But uh, not, not too bad at all. Um, but yeah, I want to go into another subject there because I can't even remember where we where we're at for the second. My memory's not as good at uh, 69 as it was at uh, 29. But one, another thing I, I, I want to know is, in your opinion, to Neil Jacobs, what is Bitcoin? Yeah, so I, I kind of touched on it earlier. I see Bitcoin, the, the Bitcoin network, it's, it's just a database, right? It's a tool we can use. And the best tool, the best way we can use it is as a money. Uh, and money is so important for a society. Before you could really understand Bitcoin, you have to understand money. Um, and money is a communication tool. And we, if we're communicating with each other, we want the strongest uh, money that there is. And I think you know Bitcoin accomplishes that better than any money that's existed in human civilization. When we look at the fiat system, right, fiat... Uh, is so distorted. We don't know how many units are out there. Uh, it's constantly printed. There's different fiat all over the world, cor corruption in governments. And if you have all this distortion in the money or what they call money these days, right, fiat, then our communication is never going to be accurate. How do I decide? How do, how do I value something if the measuring stick is always changing? So Bitcoin provides us a system of rules, not rulers, right, as you've heard. Uh, and th that's the best way to communicate is if everyone's following the same rules. So I think Bitcoin ultimately is a way to communicate value um, from one person to another. And, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of other great things that come with Bitcoin in terms of preserving your wealth uh, because you don't have monetary debasement and things like that. But being able to communicate value helps a society function. Well, those are all great points. And something I do like to point out, did, or, let me ask you a real quick question. Did you know the word fiat money before you got into Bitcoin? Definitely not. I didn't know. When I, when I heard fiat, I thought of cars. Yeah, for sure. For sure. My, my brother-in-law had one when I was a teenager. He had a little yellow fiat spider. And uh, so, so just to help explain what he just said, if you're not familiar like fiat, which many people are not, don't feel... Uh, like you're alone, but fiat is from the Latin word, and it means because I said so, basically. So the it's United Greek. States, yeah, it's a Greek, okay, it's a foreign, foreign word, it means because I say so, for the most part, and that's the way money is today. It's money because the U.S. government says it's money. That's it, only because they say so. No other reason, no other backing. And so when you hear fiat money, that's the basic uh, comment there. You know, there was no reason to know the term fiat because we had nothing to compare it to. Right? It was, everything was fiat. <laughs> everything was fiat. Right. Everything was fiat. So it's just fiat. But now we have this alternative. So we need a uh, contrasting word. So, and there had been a word. We just didn't need to know it up until Bitcoin. Well, maybe we needed to know it. Uh, but Bitcoin helped us learn why we needed to know it. That's a good point also. So, so all of a sudden you had Instead of just fiat, you had fiat and an alternative. As Bitcoin Tina would say, there is no alternative, but I don't know if that's necessarily true anymore. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, that's true. So let me ask, what do you think are the largest barriers or hurdles for people moving into Bitcoin or finding out about Bitcoin? Um, there's definitely less than there have been in the past. I think the biggest hurdles, um, there's obviously, you know, a, a learning curve to understanding Bitcoin. It combines a ton of different disciplines, right? Cryptography, coding, economics, psychology, uh, un understanding money, uh, basic finances. So it's it's combining a lot of different things, which can be intimidating. Uh, but you you don't need to know all of them. You don't need to be an expert in all of them. You just you just kind of 
have to realize that no one's an expert. So everyone says like, don't trust verify. Uh, Bitcoin is not necessarily, it's, it's about trust minimization. You know, you, you learn about certain things, but you're like, I want to dive deeper and you may never be an expert cryptographer, but you'll able, able to be able to look at the top five cryptographers in the world and see like, they're coming to a consensus on thing. It's like, okay, those are the kind of people I could look to, um, and, uh, and be, feel confident that I'm getting accurate information, right? You want to look at all different people from different backgrounds, kind of coming to a consensus on certain subject matters. Um, other barriers, you know, we have the mainstream media and governments who don't want to see Bitcoin succeed. You know, one minute you have a senator calling um, Bitcoin air and that it has no value and then later on wants to ban it. So is it is it like air um, or, you know, is it only going to be used for terrorist financing? You know, it, it's ridiculous. So I, I'd say mainstream media FUD, which stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt, for anyone who doesn't know, um, and government FUD is definitely a hurdle to adoption. It scares a lot of people from coming in. Um, and I guess in, you know, certain less developed countries, you know, just getting them the infrastructure they need. A lot of people still don't have internet access around the world. Um, so getting them internet access, getting them uh, tools to get connected, um, educating them on wallets, and how to how to download a wallet on a phone, right? Uh, so there's education, there's FUD, there's learning curves. Uh, so th there's a lot of different things. But like I said earlier, you know, we're definitely at a better place than we were last year, two years, and years ago. We only get better and better, and there's only more and more uh, learning tools available. You know, earlier I said I work for uh, for Swan now, and they have a ton of learning materials on Swan site. They call it the canon, and you could go through. It's a tough, if, whether you want to talk about like environment, uh, ha, you know, people say Bitcoin's bad at the environment, and we have a lot of articles, you know, kind of disputing those facts. Um, it talks talks about the environment, energy, government fud, and really explains, you know, why you should feel confident in Bitcoin and how you could explain that to friends. So I would definitely check that out. And yeah, that's 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 all I got there. And one of the things I guess Swan is really known for is dollar cost averaging or DCA, which is not a Bitcoin term. That's a term that's used in the stock market or whatever. If you want to find out more about Swan, who Neil works for, go to uh, swan.com slash Gary and check that out there. That's my affiliate account to let everybody know. But if you use that account, you'll get $10 worth of free Bitcoin. And I think I might get a couple dollars worth of Bitcoin. But uh, Swan has been... Uh, also a, a great supporter of Bitblock Boom, and they're our platinum sponsor this year for 2024. So oh, awesome. did you not know that? I, I did, oh, I did. Okay. Uh, I did from you, you kind of whispered it to me, but okay. I, didn't, I didn't know publicly. Yeah, so um, I don't know if it's public or not. It is now, I guess. Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah no, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just Babbling. I can't even remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> On to you. Well, I have, I do have a question. Um, you know, our statement I wanted to say, we were talking about people not understanding. I don't completely understand Bitcoin mining, right? But I don't know how email works either. You know, and I don't question as to whether email is going to work. It's been around long enough that it's going to work. And that's the way a lot of things are with Bitcoin. It's been here like 12 years now. So it's proven that the system works. So you don't need to understand all these little parts of it. You know, some things you're just going to, you can just take for granted, like mining is going to work. Nodes are going to do their jobs. I don't need to know what nodes do. I don't need to know how they work. It might be interesting for some. I do understand, but that's not necessary. The main thing is to understand money, which you were getting at earlier. That's the real deal. Yeah, definitely understanding money. You know, I would never, you know, discourage anyone if they want to learn more, you you know, if they are curious about mining, you know, the tools are available. If you feel confident enough to where you're like, I don't need to know all the nitty gritty. I've talked to enough people. That's correct. And that's a good, good point. Um, we're going to go to a word from our sponsor and we'll be right back with Neil Jacobs. 